Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's give this a try. Same place, same time, same station, back in Ome again. It's stinky hot here, and if it wasn't for this camera, I wouldn't have any clothes on, but whatever. Okay, a couple of things before we start. This may work and it may not work. What happens is I, when I'm... Is that an e-group? I don't know, let me see it. When I stream here from Ome, I can't use the, the optical fiber line that's upstairs. I have to stream from a pocket Wi-Fi. And they give me a three gigabyte package limit per month. I've asked for the maximum, that's all they will give me. And when I reach it, they start throttling. And that works for each month. A couple of weeks ago, we streamed from here. It's still the same month. I've looked at my Wi-Fi router here. I've got it here, and it shows I'm now at 2.59. If it hits three, their system may automatically start throttling me, which will kill the stream stone dead. I can't control this. I've written to their email support saying, look, guys, take me off the cap for a while. I'll pay, whatever. No response from them. So that's problem number one. We may get capped and this thing may die in five minutes from now. I have no control over that. Second is audio. I brought my mic. I brought my pin mic. Get ready to plug it into the camera. This is the camera we normally use for the outside view in the Saksa. I find out a few minutes ago that it has no external audio input, unlike the camera that I use over my desk in the Saksa. So I brought my pin mic and uh, we have nowhere to plug it in. That camera doesn't accept it and the Mac laptops don't accept external audio. Someone's asked by the upstairs router, if we're, gonna, if we're going to do this on an ongoing basis, I will run a cable. I will run an Ethernet cable from that router all the way down to the basement here, and I will go in direct if we do this on an ongoing basis. This is still just a casual thing. So, as far as audio goes, right now I'm speaking into the MacBook audio. <laughs> I've heard you guys tell me it's no good, it's no good, it's no good. The plan is at the end of the stream, I will get up and walk around with that camera this time, holding the cables in as well as I can, and we will switch to that audio. Whatever will happen, will happen. So anyway, let's give this a try. As far as the work goes, because I didn't bring my carving bench, my carving tools, because I didn't bring everything here, the only thing I can do today is another one of those little embossing jobs. I'm sorry, the actual work here that's going to go on this morning is really really not so interesting. I'm sorry. Okay. My audio is at max. I cannot give any more. If it's too low, I'm sorry. There's at the moment nothing I can do about this. So the work will be not so interesting. It'll be just embossing something. We'll show you the print. If you want an interesting stream, it's up to you guys. Throw me some interesting questions. We'll go for it. I do have, because this is Ome, I brought from the collection upstairs a show and tell item that none of us have ever seen before. And if we can do that, then after I finish uh, embossing, if the stream holds, we can point the camera at the book and we can have a show and tell. Then we'll finish off walking outside. If I try and hold all the connections, we can see things outside. No sunshine. It's a cloudy day this morning. So the, uh, the, the stream and the waterfall are down there, but uh, not so beautiful today. Here in the summertime, I'm coming home more and more often. Well, this time I'm on a four-day break. This is unheard of for me. And it's the first time I've done this in the six years since we opened the Asakusa shop. I am now in Ome on my second day, and I'm planning on staying two more days. The print we will be embossing today. It's not anything brand new. Is something that's been in our catalog for a number of years. It is from the Ikue Heroes portrait series. I forget what Jed called it, not the Joker. Uh, I forget what he called it. No idea. We can't use the actual character's name, of course, because these are parodies. It's a character from uh, Final Fantasy. I don't know what number. I'm sorry. I'm not so hip on all the games. We have a beautiful, beautiful deck of prints. This came from our Kubota-san, who was really our number one master printer these days. He doesn't, he's not my employee. We've got some cutoffs. He's cut four or five for 
So let's get this organized. It's not a Toreador, it's more like a, is it better to show it here? It's more like a Joker type character. I myself don't know the game, so I can't give you any advice on this. It's Final Fantasy. Beautifully carved. Carved by Kawasaki-san. I didn't carve this. This one is carved by Kawasaki-san and printed by Kubota-san, who is the oldest of the printers working for us. Yes, that's the character. Five letters starting with K. We ourselves, of course, cannot use those names. They're trademark names. It's funny, we had an email uh, over the weekend, on a Saturday email came, I'll be replying to them this morning. It's an email from a major, major department store down in Osaka. It's the Hankyu chain of department stores. I had an exhibition there, oh, I don't know, 30 years or so. They want an exhibition of our Ukiyo Heroes prints with Jed. They want to have a big master exhibition of this. And the first email that came in said, one, are you guys cool for an exhibition for this? And two, you're okay with Nintendo, right? You've got permission to do this, right? And then the third question, fourth question. And I will have to phone them this morning and say, sorry guys, we cannot have a giant national exhibition of our Ukiyo Heroes prints. Because these are parody, pirated items. We do not have open permission from the company who owns the trademarks. Let's give this a try, see what's happening. Perfect. Bingo. I don't know if you can see it here. I don't have my normal desk light set up. Uh, it's going to be difficult to see in this flat light. Can we catch it? There we go. Bingo. It says Hori, which is carving. Kawasaki, the name of the young girl who carved this. And then Suri Kubota. He's our number one outside printer. Let's roll. Yeah, sorry if the work is not specifically interesting. It's up to you guys. Throw me some questions. We can move the camera angle. We can focus on the waterfall or something out there a bit more if we need to. And if we're really lucky, we'll get a visit from an egret or a heron as we go along. If you notice something out there, white flapping down, instantly let me know and we can try and get the camera on it. I went out there yesterday evening for a paddle in the cool water, and as I went down my stairs, two floors below me to get to the water, there was a heron or egret, I don't know the difference, down at the other end there. Yeah, Nintendo, they, they seem to have agreed to leave us alone. We never have had official communication with them. They clearly know about what we're doing. We've been doing this now here in Japan for eight years. They clearly know about us. They have made their decision to, to leave us alone, which is fine. But there's no way I can allow a department store to have a national scale exhibition on this work without having their cooperation. And I do not want to go and ask them for this. So I just told the department store I will when I phone this morning. I'm going to tell them, sorry guys, I cannot do this. So homage is legal, parody is legal. There's, it's a gray line. It would come down to the, to the judge at the end of the day. If there was a dispute, the judge bangs his hammer and says guilty, not guilty, whatever. We can't set up an exhibition with all the insane costs it incurs, we can't set up an exhibition without clearing it first. And I do not want to talk to Nintendo. At the moment, it's a don't ask, don't tell. Even out here in Omer, it is still stinky, stinky, stinky hot here in Japan. Chuck, good morning, good morning. You've been here. Hey, you've been in this room. You've seen this view. 
Good morning, good morning. You're up late in uh, Holland, or the Netherlands, excuse me. The most places have AC. Of course, air conditioning is a huge thing in Japan. Of course, of course, of course. This building, when I bought it, uh, there's no air conditioner built into structures to houses here. Air conditioning is tacked on. It's window units or it's, you know, the units of an inside and an outside. And I do not have any. When I bought the house, the previous owner took all those things with him. You don't buy them. And I haven't bothered. I myself, I'm not really a fan of air conditioning. We had it in our shop. You've got to do it when you're in a public facing environment. But for me personally, I may be a little bit stupid about this, but I would rather feel the flow of the years, getting hot in summer, chilly a bit in winter, and feel the flow of the seasons on my body. I'm not the kind of person that wants 23 degrees all the time, all year long. A bit of a, whatever, old reaction of this, I guess, I'm sorry. The summers do get hot. In the city, of course, they do get hot. Up in the uplands or up in Hokkaido, it's much more bearable. But down here near the coast. about losing your dad there and all. I lost my dad three years ago and all. Glad that there was something. You know. So what I'm doing, of course, we're damping. This is water. It's just a, a, a cloth with a tiny bit of water. It's not soaking at all. I just damp it. Tiny bit of damp on that corner, rubbing the embossing, and having the paper damp there a little bit helps the embossing take a bit deeper and it helps it come out a bit more permanent. I could emboss this without the water, but this gives me a bit better uh, bite. Can you find that spot again? You can see it there, I guess, can you, right? 40 Kawasaki Suri Kubota. And the plate itself, these are polymer plates. We do not make these, we do not carve these things. You can see it, it's, it's a standard polymer plate used for, for uh, relief printing these days, not for offset printing. It's an actual, the letters are standing up. There you can see them there. The letters are standing up. It's a polymer plate. And we're at the shop because I'm at home. I'm allowed to go home for a day or two sometimes. <laughs> I don't commute back and forth. The place I'm in now, for those of you who don't know, I'm in the city of Ome, which is a suburb of Tokyo. And people actually do. My neighbor here, whose home is in the next room, those glass windows you see right there, that's my neighbor Ishida-san. He works in Tokyo. He commutes six days a week. From here, he leaves at 6.30 a.m. on his little scooter to go to the station, which is in Ome Station. He then goes by train to Tokyo. He works near uh, Gotanda, I think. So it's about a two-plus-hour trip for him. Then he comes back at home. He comes back in the evening. He, his little bike comes in. I hear him. He parks his bike at 10.30 at night. So his, his working day is from... He leaves at 6.30 in the morning, gets back at 10.30 at night. And thinks nothing of it. And on the train in the morning when he goes, because the trains start here in Ome, he's timed it, he knows the routine, he will get a seat. He will sit down here because the trains start here. When he comes back, he's getting on the train at Shinjuku Station and it's already jammed even at, you know, 9.30 or 9 o'clock when he gets on it. So he strap hangs. He will strap hang almost all the way home unless he's lucky to stand in front of somebody who gets up part way along. And that's his normal work routine six days a week.
So I dropped the stream. It seems okay at this end. Let me check my router here. We're at 2.87 gigabytes. We're still under the three giga limit. All the green buttons are okay. Seems all right at this end, but warning again, we could go off any moment when I reach my monthly limit on this cheap little router that I'm using today. No grasshopper, well, there are grasshoppers out there. I don't think they're making any noise. The noise you hear are the insect we call semi. Now what I've done is actually I've closed the door to keep the noise down, the windows are open. I'm soaked. This my shirt now is actually wet back it's just wet all the way down and I'm just sitting here doing light work this is one reason why I come out here to Ome the last couple of days I've had so much fun I've been cleaning up upstairs it's years literally years since I've cleaned up upstairs so yes I was cleaning up upstairs every every hour or so choop, bang splash in the river get back upstairs I've discovered a bunch of stuff, you know, cleaning up up there, the, the collection that we're now calling it. I'm discovering stuff I'd forgotten I had, stuff that I bought 10 years ago through in the closet, get you later guy, and uh, then forget about it. Is it possible to get pigments in the United States? Yes, all over the place. There's all kinds of places to buy pigments for woodblock printmaking. There are major companies there. Kramer is one. What's another one? Sinopia. I'm not sure how to spell it is another. If you want Japanese imported stuff, go to McLean's in Oregon. Pigments are easy. We, pigments are easy. They're all over the place. Will any of it go in the flea market? Our own collection. No, the things I'm talking about in our collection, they are not for sale at all. Not for sale. We're building, you know, like, like the book, the book I'm going to show you later on this morning. <clears throat> it's a book from the Meiji era, and there's absolutely no way we will ever, ever, ever think of selling those things. These are going to be the core of our business in the years after I'm gone, actually. Moko Hong Kong will have this wonderful collection. It will be showing it on the internet, and it will be displaying it in Tokyo in a collection room, a library room. Planning is already well underway. When I say I forgot about it, simply in the times when we have cash here, in the times when we had money, and actually that was about 10 years ago before I started publishing prints, I was doing fairly well myself with the Poet series. I had revenue. I started collecting prints to learn about them, to teach myself what the old prints were like. So in the years I had revenue, I spent a ton. I was a wonderful customer for the dealers in the shops down, downtown. No herons yet today. Just for a minute, let me zoom down there, show you what's going on. The river is actually about eight or nine meters below me. I am in the first, well, I'm in the second sub basement. There's an empty floor below me, and then it goes down to the river. Let me see if I can get a close up there for people that have never seen it.
A fish, yes, there are fish. There are little tiny, what would you call them in English? Brook trout, I guess. I think the Japanese name for them is Yamame. They're not the larger Ayu that are down in the main river below us. And this is a typical summer day. You can see the depth of this thing. This is a brook. Here in Japan, it's still called a river, a kawa, but this is a brook by normal terms. In typhoon time, I cannot walk in it because that thing roars along and anything in there will just be swept away. And the stones and stuff are rearranged every major storm. The waterfall you saw is a weir. And there's another one on the right hand side. We can't see it because of the jungle. We are just about halfway between two weirs where the river has been controlled down a step and down a step and down a step. The stones, the embankments, these are from the Taisho era about 1910-1915, somewhere around there. I didn't prepare the Google, I know, uh, the Google, what you call it, the length, latitude, longitude, I'm sorry, maybe somebody could have that, I don't know, I didn't. Uh... Someone's asking, John Bicker, where is the location? John's going to search for Google, <laughs> whatever, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare that, I'm sorry. So. Yes, and this. Oh, sunshine. Look at that. Just after I finish showing you the water out there, the sun comes out. <clears throat> what we're seeing on the right hand, this is on over here. That's the land on the opposite side of the river. <coughs> Excuse me. And I got very, very, very lucky. Well, it's not just lucky because I chose this. But what it is, is it's quite a wide, oh, I don't know, it's maybe almost an acre or, or something. The family across the river owns that land. And luckily for me, the, the car access to their place is down a very, very, very narrow little path. They can barely get the smallest of cars into there. It's the loop of the river. And they own the land in the loop. And the street access is terrible, so they cannot reconstruct. They can't build a new house, they can't subdivide, they can't build an apartment building because the fire engines and service vehicles can't get down that narrow street. So their land is quote unquote worthless, which to me is, oh my God, it just stays as it is, all this green stuff out there. The river's name, Karen, yes, it's the Kiyomigawa, Kiyomigawa. Kiyo is the kanji that's, uh, it's the one that means clean, clear, and kawa, uh, mi is miru, looking, and kawa is river. So it's sort of a bit of a, it's, you could take it as a cynical name, looks clean river, but whatever. Somebody's got the numbers here? The funny about the river's name, nobody, and I mean nobody, in this community knows what it's called. It's just Kawa, Anokawa, the river over there. Oh, we're over three gigs. Is the stream state alive? We're at 3.07. Warning, 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 flash, flash, flash. We may lose our stream if my ISP, if my uh, uh, internet service provider starts throttling. Stand by, stand by. I asked I asked them to let me go. I said I'd pay for it, but I got no response. So whether the message got through or not, I don't know. Got a good link? Okay, thank you. That's the what? The, the street view of this place? Thanks for the stream, Dave. It's just there. I didn't make it. <laughs> stream from the stream. Why is my data cap so low? Our normal data cap, we have nothing. I have an optical fiber connection with massive. I could run my own ISP from this building, but that's from the optical fiber upstairs. And because I don't work here normally, I have not run a cable from downstairs. So today on a temporary basis, 
I'm using a cheap little pocket Wi-Fi, the one that I use when I'm on the train going back and forth. As I said earlier in the stream, if we do start streaming here regularly, I will get a link into this room from my optical fiber connection and we will have steady streams. This is sort of at the moment, it's a temporary patch. We have fabulous net connections both here in Ome and in the Asakusa shop downtown. I used to show my data connection figures before each stream until people asked me to stop. I was showing off too much. The late folks, can we see the print? Yes, just one sec, one sec, one sec. This is not a new publication for us. This is something we published in 2014. Oh my God, six years ago. 2014, it's from our Ukiyo Heroes Portraits series. And it's a character who, it's, it's a parody of one of the characters in the Final Fantasy series. And where's the embossing? The embossing is there, not visible here. Not Kafka, get your spelling right. Or are you trying to avoid copyright issues? <laughs> I'm embossing this, the craftsman's names on this. Sorry, we've, we've already like, chatted about this a few times in the stream today. Okay, no problem. New people are coming in. I'm embossing the names on this embossment here. It's Hori Carver Kawasaki, the girl who carved this, and Sudi Kubota, the man who did the printing of this. We always put our craftsmen's names on the prints whenever they're large enough to do so. Uh, so we've got the print and don't know what it says. Soka, soka. Sorry about that. Well, all the prints, they go in a paper folder also, which has the same information in English. It says Carver, Kawasaki Noriko, and printing whoever the printer is. So the information is replicated on the packaging. Sunshine. Let's catch some of that river of sunshine. So hope we get lucky today. If an if an if an egret comes down there, just please, please, egrets, please. Let's have one during the stream. During the last stream we did here two weeks ago, our, our kingfisher went by, but it was just a flash. We couldn't see it; just hear it. Have I eaten at the Udon restaurant? Yeah, I have eaten before. I don't usually eat there very often. It's just too massive. They serve massive, massive bowls of Udon. 
and uh, I, I really can't. I don't have a taste for that much of massive carbohydrates. They call it soa. In English, it would be S-O hyphen A-N. In Japanese, it's soa. It's literally right across the street from me. I'm not sure what you're asking. The veneer on my tools natural due to age or a finish put on by the manufacturer. I'm not quite sure what you mean. The tool I'm using today are barren. It's the, the bamboo skin ties and gets replaced all the time. It won't be replaced today because it's still in beautiful condition. And then the, the it's getting beaten up a bit. So it used to be lacquered, but now it's getting beaten up. One of the girls uses, she has a ring, and her ring scrapes the front of this thing. It's sort of whatever, I can't help that. But that's what's happened here. The lacquer has been worn off. If we cared about it at some point, we could re-lacquer this, whatever. It's functional, totally, totally, totally functional. If that's what you mean, I'm not sure. The veneer on my tools, I don't know what to say here. We don't sit on the floor here anymore at all. We've, we've modernized to that extent. I'm not sitting on the floor now at all. We don't do that. For the first, whatever, 15 years of my career here in Japan, 15 plus years, I sat cross-legged, both for carving and printing, but now I don't. We've built workbenches. This bench is up from the floor. My legs are down inside. I am just sitting normally here. Ah, soka, soka. The restaurant across the street, yeah, 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 it's traditional stuff. Sorry, John. It's not the foreigner's place. It's it's a local, it's aimed for local people. They don't they can care less about you and me. Sorry. Yeah, The river is a little bit low. It's been days and days and days since there's been a good storm here. Last night we had some thunder and I was hoping we'd get a good storm and then this morning the river would be nicely up. But no, it didn't rain here last night. At all, so. Where can you get one of the prints you're embossing? If you go to our, it's mokohankan.com slash subscriptions. This is a subscription print. It's not just a single print for sale. mokohankan.com slash subscriptions. Do you have to start a raining now? We'll have, you know, if we do do more streams from here, then we're going to see it all. You'll see rain, you'll see whatever. This is what it used to be before we had the Asakusa shop. John Becker knows about this. I used to stream from this place. Streaming in quotation marks. It wasn't Twitch. Can I get Japanese citizenship? At my stage now, after living here for 35 years and having had permanent residence for 27 years, yes, if I asked for citizenship now, they would give it to me automatically. The Japanese system is pretty obscure. What you need to do to get citizenship, it's pretty obscure, but I think now I'm under the wire. I speak the language. I've paid taxes for 35 years. I'm doing nice things for the culture. If I asked for citizenship, they would give it to me. I'm in no hurry to do that. The only benefit for me is that I would be able to vote. That's all. Taxes the same, residence the same, everything's the same. As a permanent resident now, I can own property, run business, have employees. I can do everything except vote. And I can't hold public office and I can't become a police officer. None of those things are high on my bucket list at my stage of life. How far is Ome from Asakusa? Actually, Google will tell you in a couple of minutes if you typed in into your Google Asakusa Station from Asakusa Station to Ome Station. You'll get a good readout from Google. It's two hours plus on the trains, depending on 90 minute drive on paper. <laughs> Again, that depends on the time of day. 
90 minute drive if you're on a non rush hour environment. Yes, John's got it weird. We are in Ome City. Ome City, which is in essence a suburb of the Tokyo metropolitan area. But it's actually a city. There's a city hall here. The thing is, we said it's about two hours to get here, but if you stood at Nihonbashi, the core center place of Tokyo, and you had a map and you drew a little circle radius out to Ome, I'm not even halfway out to the end of Tokyo. Tokyo physically stretches this far again past me. I'm not even halfway to the edge of Tokyo. That's like how big this. Japan does not allow dual nationality. If I chose to accept to, to if I asked for Japanese citizenship, they would ask me to sign a document stating that I had renounced all my other citizenships. And I have two others. I am a British citizen, British subject, British citizen. I was born in Britain and I am a naturalized Canadian. And they actually don't go so far as to want you to show torn up passports or anything, but they do ask you to certify that you have renounced your other citizenships. There's no dual nationality in Japan for anybody over the age of 22. They allow it for children and that when the children become adults, they are asked to please choose what's it going to be, stay with us or leave. Oh, we're in trouble. It's happening. Same as last time. The computer is migrating. You guys are supposed to warn me about this. Look. You're just testing me to see my reactions, right? Last week it fell off and I grabbed it just in time. <laughs> What's the reasoning for it? Lots of countries. Lots of countries do this. I think Germany is one of these. If you want to become German, you have to kill the others. The, the modern immigrant types of countries, Canada, Australia, those kind of countries, they're like, hey, come on in and join us. It doesn't really matter. They don't care. But the older, older, older countries, the ones with huge long history that think of themselves as we are a special place, those countries in general don't allow dual nationality. That's a general thing. It's not an exact thing. Yeah, the U.S. allows it. I said, I said, modern immigrant, you know, countries that are founded on immigration. Those kind of countries, for the most part, allow it. If you're a country that's that needs immigrants to come in, what are you going to ask people to, you know, cut at the at the border? These prints are part of a set. This is the Ukiyo-e Heroes uh, portraits set. If you go to the Here's the page, and if you look for the portraits set underneath there. Okay, we're almost done here. I've got a half a dozen sheets. As I said, be sure to stream today. Half a dozen sheets. What we'll do is we've got a bit of a show and tell. We'll try and organize, and maybe we'll try again successfully or not. UK does not accept dual nationality either, not the Canadians. I don't know. I, as I said, I was born there. I became a naturalized Canadian. And after that, I went back to live in the UK for a year after I dropped out of school. I renewed my UK passport and went in there and they were okay with us. They had no problem with us at all. It might be because Canada is a Commonwealth country. Maybe they allow the dual thing for Commonwealth countries, but they wouldn't allow it if I were Japanese. I have no idea about the background for this. But in my experience, the UK is fine with this.
my daughter, Himi-chan, my older daughter, she actually is in an astonishing situation. She was born in Canada, became a Canadian as, as being born in Canada. Her mother was Japanese, so Himi also picked up through that Japanese nationality. Japan doesn't care where you were born, but if you were born to a Japanese citizen, you can, if you want, get Japanese citizenship. So Himi was Canadian and Japanese. Her dad, being a British subject, Himi also is eligible. It's a British overseas citizen, a British overseas subject, something. Born to a British parent, but not born in Britain. She then married a Romanian guy, and through him, automatically, I guess, it was already automatic, just by getting married, she became a Roman, Romanian subject and member of the Roman Orthodox whatever church and something. And they're in the EU. So because she has a Romanian citizenship, she has access to live anywhere in the EU, wherever she wants. I mean, they don't get more world than that. What has she got? Canadian, Japanese, British, and it's separate from EU now. So she can basically like whatever. She's got a passport collection. She feels Canadian. She thinks of herself as a Canadian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She's on a terrorist attack. Shows your passport. So how does she know which one to pull out? <laughs> Her sons, I don't know, how much of that do her sons get? My grandchildren. They were born in Canada, so they get the Canadian. They were born to a Japanese mother, so they can, if they want, they can get Japanese. If they do it before they're 22, they can get Japanese. Their father's Romanian. I don't know if that follows down being born out of Romania. I don't know the, the, the detail there. So, But my grandchildren do not get the British thing. That does not pass another generation down. So my grandsons do not have any kind of British overseas subject at all. Two generations is too far for the Brits. My kids are all my family. Everybody is in Canada. Uh, not My mother lives in Canada. My sister lives in Canada. My two daughters live there and my three and a half grandchildren live there. My brother at the moment is in Germany and he's trying to get to Thailand where his wife is. He's got the paperwork all worked out, but Thailand is not letting people in, even uh, Thai people. They're not letting him in from anywhere. What's there to hate about Romania? You mean the old, the old fashioned? It was an old fashioned gypsy Roma vampires. That's all. Whatever it's all. That's really trouble for my son in law. He's really bothered by that. The three point five. I have three living grandchildren and one in the oven. My daughter has a bun in the oven. My second daughter is pregnant with my fourth grandchild. Is that an expression? My second daughter is pregnant with my fourth grandchild. Okay, the work is done. The work is done. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let me, let's try this. I uh, do I have a light here. Let's try this. I might not have enough light for this show and tell. Let's try and see what happens. I will try and focus the camera for the moment on the desk beside me. We can look at the you know, show and tell here. And then at the final end of the stream, I will try and get the camera outside to give you a few minutes view of the river. Let's give it a try. Let me move, move the camera. Excuse me a sec. That's a pigeon, nothing exotic. The guy next door here, you can see the, the door there is next door, Ishida san. The door there, that's the third house down. There's a retired guy. He used to work in Tokyo. He's retired and he has pigeons. He feeds the pigeons and he's got a little box. They come and they spend the night there. So you will see pigeons coming and going out of here. Am I still married? No, 27 years. I've been a free man for 27 years. Let's try this.
to be able to do this. I think that's a bit of a Let's give this a try. I don't know, I wasn't trying to be too I wasn't trying to be too sarcastic. I know I was happily married until I wasn't happily married and uh, life is life. Lots of things happen. And we split. She left actually, she left here twenty seven years ago. And that's now whatever it's it's ancient history. Ancient, ancient history. Okay, let's have a look at this. What we're looking at here is it's from the collection upstairs. <coughs> from the collection upstairs. This is a book published in the Ma pigeons again. This is a book published in the Meiji era. And it's a book, it's not a book that was sold in bookstores. It's a book that was given away free. Find out how and why we go to the back page. Oh, it's going to reflect. Okay, John, get your dates on. Meiji 31 is the date this was published. <clears throat> I have two others in a similar format, and one is from Meiji 32, I think. I have the year before and then two years later. John has got it, 1898, and it was published in Kyoto City. And there's the address of the place in Kyoto City. And this was published, as I said, not for sale. It was for giving away. And this is a catalog of kimono patterns. This book was produced by a kimono, uh, a kimono fabric company, a company that did the weaving and dyeing and all that sort of stuff to prepare kimono fabrics. And they sold their products through kimono shops all around the country. <clears throat> now in an era before color offset printing, chong chong chong, print it out, print it out, print it out, how do you advertise your kimono fabrics to the to the shops? Now every shop can't buy samples of all of your kimono. So what they do is, there's a preface, 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 here's the list. The kimono company hires a woodblock print workshop to prepare a woodblock catalog of all their kimono fabrics for that year. Now this is not fabric, this is a woodblock print. They've already got their kimono designed. Somebody came in from the woodblock print workshop, did the sketches, said okay we can take care of this, and they prepared a catalog of 100 different woodblock prints that was their kimono for the spring of 1890, 1897, whatever John got this for me. And the catalog would be sent out to kimono shops around the country. The kimono shop, the little old lady comes into the kimono shop and what have you got? And they say, well, we have this, we have this, we've got this neat stuff available from this company down in Kyoto. And she says, I like that one. They send their telegram or mail, I was gonna say email, whatever, it's not email. They communicate with the company in Kyoto, and the Kyoto company sends back the rolls that make up one kimono. And these are all numbered. It's pattern number one, pattern number two, pattern number three. And this was the spring whatever catalog for 1898. And give me a break. This is a hundred woodblock prints. A hundred woodblock prints, and it was a free catalog sent out all the way around the country. Before I start turning pages, let's just zoom in on this one, just to get an idea of the scale of what we are talking about here. This is an astonishing, astonishing thing. This is a woodblock print. The kimono has a number, and every pattern has a name. Some of these things, of course, they would be expensive. If you were the customer in some outlying city and you wanted to order this, this is going to be an expensive thing. If this was in today's currency, I'm just going to ramble off the top of my head. But even to buy a roll of normal kimono fabric now is always upwards of $1,000 or so. 
on the special kimonos would have been even more than that. So somebody buying one of these kimonos would have been spending thousands of dollars. So because of that, they could afford to make these catalogs. Here we are, number two, number three. And the level of detail, <laughs> just give me a break. <laughs> it wasn't a flush, it was a great wave order. No, 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 a great wave add to the waiting list. Couple of things about this. This is Kyoto printing. This was not made in Tokyo. This was made in Kyoto. So when you see white objects like these white flowers, this is white gofun powder put onto this thing. Gradation after gradation after gradation after gradation after gradation after gradation. It's just no end. Just no end. Some of them simpler than others. The ones with the huge amounts of black, these would be more ceremonial type kimonos. People would take these to a wedding or perhaps a funeral, whatever. And I said it was a spring catalog. I'm wrong. This is all year. We've already seen spring patterns and autumn patterns. I'm sorry. It's obviously a general catalog for the full year. And fashion was fashion, you know. I myself know nothing about this at all. But this fashion of this year, 1898, if you run forward two years, my God, this is so old fashioned. Nobody would ever buy this two years later. You know, for us now, we just look at it. It seems all of a type. But back then, there were changes in the fashion year by year by year. Of course, we have no idea of that nuance now. Specialists do, I guess. People like me, of course, don't. And it goes on page after page after page. There's no point in sitting here going through a hundred separate pages. This is a ceremonial one too. And the details, just my God, the details. It's just, I don't know. Can I? And each one is a painting. Each one is a painting. Then the other thing about this, okay, let's let's jump ahead and stuff like this. It's going to be just a million pages of these. Things. Let's just jump ahead because at the end of the book we have different stuff. We have our patterns. Let me just skip ahead first to the back. Just, just look at this stuff. Some of them are more children oriented. And here, this now, this is important. We have this one. Do you see the open, empty white circle here? When you order the fabric, you order two things. You order, I want number 69, and you would have it ordered in a specific length, and you would order also, I want it with our family crest. And at the back of the book here, let me just jump to the back for a minute. At the back of the book, they have lists and lists and lists of family crests. So you would order the family crest and it would be sewn in to the kimono fabric that you were ordering. John is asking, show how the pages fold over. Okay, let's grab a random page here. These two pages are one wide wood block. The piece of wood would have been this wide on this page, on this page, if you imagine this sheet of paper being opened out, it went face down and they were printed together. After printing, each woodblock print is folded in half. This is the front of the paper, front of the paper, the back of the paper is inside there. They're folded in half and then they're sewn together at the binding. You can actually see this here. The binding, this is how the whole thing was sewn together. So whenever we see a spread like this, this is on one piece of wood and this is on another piece of wood. It doesn't bleed into the next page. There's no bleeding involved at all here. Most of these prints are in the middle of the sheet of paper. They bleed through to the back, but you can't see that here. I'm not about to tear this open, but if you can see, there it is. Look, there's the black kimono here. That's the front of the paper. Let me get this so you can peek through, peek through. Can you see the back of the paper there? It's on the back. There's no way we can print on both sides of this paper because the other side always shows through. 
so we can show the front of the paper and the front of the paper and the back sides are hidden. And these companies did a new kimono boki chair. As I said, I have three from this same company. Where can you order one of these kimonos? Get yourself a time machine. This is 1898. <laughs> <coughs> and it's dozens and dozens and dozens of wood blocks per page. And the size of the blocks, oh my God. Just, just, I don't even know where to start. This is just an astonishment, an absolute astonishment. I mentioned I skipped ahead to the back. At the back, there were the family crests, lists of them, lists and lists. Of them. These are the standardized family crests in Japan. If your family didn't have one, you could, I'm sure, arrange to have one. Drawn up. These are just listed here alphabetically. Thousands of them. They're all numbered and identified. And when you order your kimono, I was business at my kimono shop when they sent me the catalog. I bought this. I bought this. I bought this. This cost me a few hundred dollars. Absolutely, this cost me a few hundred dollars. <clears throat> and then, of course, they also had swatches. They're gluing. I can't pick it up. This is fabric. This is not printed. This is literal silk fabric glued in to the book to show. Have these faded? I don't know. Some of these colors are not traditional Ukiwe colors, but they must have been popular. This is the color palette that was popular in 18. 98. And just for fun, why not do a page of embossing just to finish off your catalog? Like, who cares how much extra it costs? <laughs> and no, I wasn't here in 1897. Number 100 in the catalog. So, this would clearly be a ceremonial. It's on our, the turtles. A symbol of old age, and there are a million, million turtles in this picture. The book doesn't smell bad, it's okay. It was preserved well, it smells like an old, musty book. I've taken care of it well myself. I aired it out when I first got it. I'll probably air it out again today, now that I think about it, now that you've reminded me of it. And it stays well protected on our shelf. On a you see these, there's a bit of a terrible story to tell here. You know, I bought this and I will keep it and it will stay as it is. But sometimes when the dealer's downtown, they have a chance to bid on these. And you think about the dealer downtown. Yeah, he bid against me. Maybe he'll get this for $300. They cut the strings, open these things up, cut page by page, and they sell the finished book page, original print from 1898, only $125. And there's a hundred pages in here. hundred pages. He's selling for a hundred bucks each. Like he's going to get $10,000 for this thing, for which he's paid 200 bucks. And the book gets destroyed and dispersed all around the world. It's a business model. <coughs> Not for us. Not for us. Yeah, mushy bushy, sure. Somebody asked me that last week and I couldn't remember it. So somebody else on the stream was very nice to remind us about it. So, Mokohankan's policy, just so you know, one, we never cut books, period. And two, I never buy or sell in our shop individual book pages because I want nothing to do with that end of the business. Am I trying to be pretentious or on my high horse? I don't know. Simply, I do not want to contribute to destroying these books. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a... Whatever. Okay, it's nine o'clock. Let's do this. I'm going to change the audio now to the, instead of the MacBook audio, it'll be the audio from the camera. And I'm going to try to walk outside and take the camera outside to show you a bit more of the scenery outside here. It may crash. Last time I tried to do this last week, it crashed. The audio, the, the cable came out of the camera. And I won't know because I can't see 
the, the view here. So let's take our chances. I'll pop this off. You don't need to see my mug anymore. I will turn on the audio now for the other camera. Audio going up, 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 up. MacBook audio going down, 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 down. Can you hear me? First change made. Audio is okay now. Let's give this a try. It's going to get seasick because I am going to be, I have no steady cam here. It's going to be seasick. I will try it and set the camera up outside. <coughs> Let's have a go. Cable one, check. Cable two, check. Plug in, check. Door, open. Let's give this a try. I'm going to be able to hold this thing with the Okay, seasick time coming up. Let me just jump back inside for a minute and see if we did actually get this worked out. Okay, I just checked inside. It seems like we're okay. Maybe I dropped it for a moment, but we are now standing here. I think the cables are okay. Okay, that's the same view we had. Let's zoom out and see what we can get of the neighborhood. We are now on the outside balcony of my place. If we look through here, well, we're seeing my reflection, but that's where I was a moment ago. And you can see the structure I have built my workroom out from where the original wall used to be. And here's the structure. Those are the houses. That's the third house up there. He has a first basement, as do I. We can't see mine. And he has a second basement. And that's where we're at. And then stairs go down from there to level five. And they go down from there to the river. Let's try and get and see if we can see any fishies. I got it sting by itself. Is it okay? Let me go back inside and check. I can't see from here. Are we actually getting any fish? There are fish in there, you know. 
Have we had it lucky? Did any swim by? Oh yeah, yeah, catch, 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 catch. Yay! <laughs> I've never eaten any. I don't know if they're edible. They certainly eat. I throw them food. They really, really, really like pasta, chopped into tiny pieces. And I think maybe they think it's like a kind of fish or something. I don't know. The water is super, super clean. When I first moved here, yeah, look at that. When I first moved here about 20 years ago, it wasn't because there was a car repair factory upstream that threw oil in the river. And there were still a couple of very, very old people who hadn't connected to the sewer system. And they were dumping into the river. Both of those things are now history. And this water is just straight off the mountain. Straight off the mountain. Okay, let's pan around a little bit. We panned earlier to the left. Let's zoom again. Sorry here. Just a sec. We're looking now straight down. If I spit now, I'm not going to spit, but if I spit, it goes right in there, down there. We are looking straight down into the water from my home. The water surface, though, oh my God, it's about, I don't know, well, tell you what, should I, uh, should I take a little trip down there just to show you, give you an idea of the scale of what we're talking about here? Can I do this? What have I got to lose? Let's go. The camera seems all right by itself. People were asking earlier, am I worried about floods and stuff, you know, and the amount of flood to be able to get the water from that level up here is just, it's not going to happen. Okay. What else can we see? That's about it. There's the house across the river, that's Tamaris, huh? He himself has passed away, but his family is ignoring the land. Like they have in their backyard, they have their family graveyard in their backyard. And probably that's about all we're going to be able to see. The right-hand side here is just the jungle. It's an absolute, there's a weir down there. The river is down there. We can't even see it. There's a little temple inside that forest. We can't see it. The right-hand side here is just an absolute jungle. Okay, 
I think that'll do it. Let's finish off here with the focus. If I can find the waterfall. Help me, help me, help me, I'm lost. I'm lost, I can't find the waterfall. There it is. Okay, let's leave it like that. Okay, I think we'll sign off there. It's Monday morning now. The next stream should be a normal stream. Thursday morning, Japan time. Wednesday evening, most foreigners. It'll be back in Asakusa, and I will be carving one of the color blocks to our next print, to my next print. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.